doing a makeup tutorial on the look that you see right here so I was very inspired by this look for um, like from a look that I did back in September I ended up wearing this to Sephora when I worked there and I felt like I got a lot of compliments on it people said my makeup looked really pretty or you know looked really cool with the colors that I used so I decided to go ahead and do it for today and typically I would wear this look during like the spring or summertime when more of like the oranges and corals and all of that are more in style but since it's very you know, cold here in Ohio and I'm actually freezing right now, I decided to go ahead and do something a little bit warmer so then it could get me in the mood for spring and summer even though it's January and I still have a while to go until it gets warm here. Wow! But I decided to go ahead and do this so then I can add a little bit of warmth into my life for today and if somebody else lives in a colder climate, Hopefully this adds a little bit of warmth into your life as well. This look is also very easy to achieve. I feel like it's just more so with the blending and the tools that you use versus like a lot of precision. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to have you here. Also, feel free to share this video as well because who knows, maybe somebody else would find this video helpful and you know, maybe it'll add a little bit of warmth to somebody else's life right now as well. I'm gonna stop rambling and I hope you enjoy. So let's get into it. got my coffee and I am ready to go okay so I am so excited to film this look I did this look back in September I think September yeah but I did this look back in September and when I wore it to Sephora like when I was working I feel like I got a lot of compliments on it and people said it looked really cool and so I figured I wanted to do this look now since it's all cold and stuff here in Ohio and it's like just dry and just this look will just add a little bit of color and warmth to our life right now. So I'm going to start off by covering up the situation that we have going on currently. Um, if you watch my foundation routine video then you would know that I get more hormonal based acne and my face scars so easily from the acne. So I mainly have scarring here and it looks way more red on camera than what it does in person so yay. Um, but this one decided to just pop up out of nowhere. I think it was just like a clogged pore that I had. So I did decide to take a, another round of my antibiotics. So that's where we are right now. So I'm gonna start off with color correcting. No, I'm not. I am not. I did this mistake before. Oh my God, I don't know why sometimes my brain doesn't work, but I'm actually going to start off first by priming my skin. So I'm going to be using the Bobbi Brown Face Base. I think this is, this is what it's called, Vitamin Enriched Face Base. So this has shea butter, vitamin C and E, and what it's going to do is give you a little bit of hydration plus provide a soft matte finish. So you don't need a lot of this. Um, I just go in with like a little bit. It is a little bit thicker as far as like the consistency of the uh the primer but it provides like a little bit of like a tackiness to the like your skin so that's always nice because then if it has like a little bit of tackiness then your foundation is going to really like hold on and stick to that and i'm just patting it into my skin I feel like my lips are feeling a little dry too, so I'm gonna also hydrate my lips and I'm going to be using my holy grail obsession, the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I mentioned this in my skincare video that I just posted like a couple days ago and it's so good, so good. If you wanna see me be like a freak and go obsess over it in that video, then go watch that. But I'm just gonna put that on my lips just to add like a little bit of moisture while I'm doing my makeup. And if you hear any like obnoxious noises in the background or if my backdrop moves at all, then like that noise that you probably just heard. Um, my cats are also in this room with me, so they'll probably be messing with my blinds because that's what they like to do. So yay kitties, but I love them. Hang on, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab them real quick, hang on. So this is one, his name's Ozzy. He's my little baby. 
but he is, I believe, going on six months old, so he likes to get in to the freezer when I open the freezer drawer, and he likes to crawl back inside the freezer and just explore things, and he's my little troublemaker, but he's so cute. And then this is Livy, my little princess, my little baby princess. So they were in the same litter. Um, oh no, except the love, Livy, except the love, except it. She doesn't want my love right now. But they're my little kitties and they can get so annoying sometimes, but I love them. All right, so now that I'm done trying to make my cats love me, um, where was I? I am going to go in oh, and conceal the situation that we currently have. So I'm going to be using this NYX HD Concealer Green Colored Color Correcting Prime uh, Concealer, I mean, excuse me. And I'm just going to put that on the areas. So I'm just going to put this on the areas of concern. And I am also looking in my mirror that's off to the side right here. It's like too big to stick in front of me so I can look down, but I need a, like a little small one so that I'm not always constantly like looking in a different direction, but I'm just gonna tap that out with my finger. And if you didn't watch my foundation routine video, I can link that down below, um, but just using something that's green for color correcting a like a, like a zit or any like redness is just going to help neutralize it. So, because green and opposite, they're like, or green and opposite, because green and red are opposite of each other, so that's why the green is going to help neutralize the redness. And then I'm just gonna take a concealer and then just put that on top, just so that green doesn't like have the chance of shining through my foundation at all. And then super quick and easy, just tapping it in with my finger. All right, and then since I finished that concealer, I'm going to go in with a little bit of a translucent powder and set a, with a little bit of powder that concealer that I just did. And the reason being is because, sorry if I seem out of breath, I just like sprinted up my stairs and into my beauty room to grab my powder because I forgot to bring it down with me. So, excuse me. But um, the reason why I am setting that with a little bit of powder is just so when I go in with my foundation, like it doesn't move uh, like the concealer around and the reason why you want to go in with a little bit of powder is because technically you're supposed to go in with your creams or your liquids before powders because if you go in with powders first and then try to put creams or liquids on top of it then it's just going to like not you know work it's just gonna look weird or um, a little bit like maybe like ball up a little bit or just like the consistency is just gonna be off. It's just not supposed to do that. All right, so I'm gonna start with my face because personally for me, I start with my face before I do my eyes. Now, some if you wanna do your eyes first, then feel free to do that. But I do notice when I'm doing other people's makeup, I start with their eyes first and then I do their face. So it's just weird how, you know, that works out. But for my foundation today, I'm going to be going in with the Smashbox Studio Skin foundation and this one is a nice medium coverage foundation that is going to be more of a natural finish so it's really any skin type skin type can wear it if you're oilier just make sure that you're using your mattifying products like your primers and your powders to help with the oil control now this also does have hyaluronic acid in it so ding 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 vocabulary word if you watched my last video that i posted my skincare one i talked a little bit about hyaluronic acid so I talked a little bit about hyaluronic acid in that video. Um, so it's just gonna be a very hydrating. It's going to give you nice deep hydration. So this foundation is not going to dry you out. Now with it being hydrating, it doesn't mean that you're going to be glowy or dewy because that's not the finish of it. The finish is just very natural. So it's going to almost mimic like how your skin would naturally be. Um, so it's not gonna be drying or too dewy in that sense. So that's why it's really good for anybody. And I believe this should be good for sensitive skin as well. But I really like this foundation. Now during the winter time, since I have more combination skin, I typically don't get dry, but sometimes my skin will go through periods where matte foundations do make me look 
a little bit drier. Um, and that's only because since I live in a colder climate, it is drier outside in the air. So I like to go in with this foundation when my face is starting to look like that with my matte foundations. So that's why I'm going in with it now because my skin has been doing that to me lately. And that's what I also like about that Bobbi Brown um, foundation primer that I went in with because it's not going to be something that's super mattifying and drying like some matte primers can be, but it will give you a natural matte finish um, without being like overly drying because it does have some of those hydrating factors in it as well. And I feel like what's nice about Smashbox is that this foundation, I believe, I believe it's in between, anywhere is in between 32, I know it's not 32, I think 30, anywhere is in between 34 to $36, I believe, for a bottle of this. So, I mean, it's relatively affordable as far as like being in Sephora. It's on the lower end of the spectrum as far as like foundation prices. So if you're looking to get like maybe your first like high end um, or higher end foundation, I would try this one if you don't want to spend like an arm and a leg for a foundation but you want it to be a little bit more higher end because this one is actually really nice. I actually really like it. I have it in both my winter and my summer color. All right, now that I have that foundation all blended out, I'm gonna go back in with that concealer that I went in with earlier to cover up the color correcting concealer. And I'm just going to put that on those areas. Sorry, my cats are like running around. No, don't scratch me but I'm gonna put that on those areas that uh, may have like a little bit of redness showing through and I'm just going to put the concealer on top of it just to give it a little bit extra coverage. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and conceal my under eyes. So I'm going to be using my Holy Grail Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Um, this one is my one of my favorites. It Now it can be very drying since it is a matte concealer. So you know, mix it with all other, con other concealers if you want to try it. Uh, but, which is what I do sometimes, because sometimes like it makes my under eyes look too dry, like especially during the winter time. And it's been doing that to me lately. It doesn't do it all the time, but I go through periods. But I'm also going to mix it with the Josie Maron Vibrancy Concealer. And this is has argan oil infused in it. So it's going to be a little bit more of a natural finish and with that hydration of the argan oil and I'm just going to blend that out. Now I like to look up when blending out my concealer so then it can get into the little creases and crevices that are underneath of like like right up against the eye. And I'm like trying not to make my ugly face like my ugly face that everyone has when either putting on mascara or you know getting up real close underneath of your eye, which it's like so weird that you know that just naturally happens. Another thing that I find kind of funny is that whenever I'm doing somebody else's makeup and I am like getting in like this area, like if I have to put concealer there, like normally on me when I blend it out, I'm all like like making that like ugly face, and so like whenever I'm doing somebody else's makeup but I'm doing that area, like I naturally find myself like wanting to like make that face. Like, I don't know why. And like, I've like done it like a few times before when I've like done somebody else's makeup. Like I'll be, I'll like notice myself like sitting there, like making that face, like the ugly butt face. All right, so I don't even know where I was before my camera shut off because the internal temperature gets too high. And so it decides to shut off and it can be very frustrating, especially when I'm in the middle of blending out my concealer. So I, off camera, I went ahead and blended out the rest of my under eye. I did my forehead, my down my nose, and then on my chin, just to even out the lightness of the concealer. So if you have any, you know, questions on that, like if you haven't done it before, I'll list my foundation routine video down below. But the reason why I didn't want to wait for my camera to cool down is because if you wait too long when going in with your concealer, like after your foundation, then your foundation is going to dry and then your concealer is going to blend out, you know, not the best. So that is why I went and how to do it off camera. But I'm gonna go ahead and set my 
under eye with some powder real quick and I am using the Ben Nye Luxury Powder in the shade Cameo. So this is just a translucent, um, mattifying uh, loose powder and I am going in with a powder because I do not want my concealer to move around and I just want it to stay in place all day. Plus this will help those oilier areas uh, in my T-zone since I am more combination. So I'm just setting everywhere that I put that concealer and all the areas that I get oily. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Power Power Powder in the shade Dim Light, and it has a little bit of a sheen to it. So since I'm more normal on the outer perimeters of my face, I'm going to set my foundation out there as well. And this is just going to add that almost like that glow from within type of look. Not anything dewy, but just like a little bit of a glow from within. But the reason why I also set out there as well is because um, like when I go in with like my bronzers and my blush, that's not gonna move around the foundation that's out here and make it just get like patchy and um, like choppy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows off camera and I will be right back. All right, brows are snatched and ready to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set my eyelids with a translucent powder. So just really any powder. I'm just gonna go in with a Ben Nye one that I used earlier. And I am setting my eyelids because since I used a concealer, I do not want my eyeshadow to get creasy. Also, if you set your eyelids with a powder, no matter if you're using a concealer to prime or a eyeshadow primer, this is just going to create a smoother base for your eyeshadows to blend on. So they're just gonna blend more seamlessly and a little easier versus going in with something tackier like a eyeshadow primer or like a sticky concealer. So this will just help it blend better. Okay, so then for my eyes today, I'm going to go in with a mix of single shadows and a eyeshadow palette. But the first color that I'm going to start off with is from the brand Makeup Geek, which are my favorite single shadows. I love them. But I'm going to go in with the shade Chickadee right here. So it's a really pretty like orange colored shadow, which I feel like can be intimidating for some people, but it can look really flattering on the eyes, especially if you have blue eyes. Colors like this are just really gonna make your blue eyes stand out and really pop. So I'm going to be taking my Sigma Fluffy Brush, which is the Sigma E40, and I'm just going to dip that into the shadow. And I'm going to be putting that in my crease for a transition shade. Now the reason why you wanna go in with a transition shade, which is just like a lighter shade of um, like an eyeshadow first, because that's just going to help your colors blend out as like, you know, like the darker you get with your shadows. And if you notice, I am going back in windshield wiper motions when placing and blending my eyeshadow. But then once I get most of that color off of the brush, then I'll also transition into small circular motions just to help the blending process a little bit and help blend it upward a little bit. And also take your time blending because what you see like on videos, like it can be pretty quick because people are gonna like obviously obviously cut some of the like, footage out, but take your time blending. Like if you think that you blended, blend some more because you don't want your shadows to be harsh. You just want them to be like easy transitions, smooth transitions, nothing that's like super harsh, like little bat wings, which we've all been guilty of and some of us still are guilty of that. But I know for me, I was guilty of that like in high school when I didn't really wear much makeup, but then when I like wore eyeshadow like I had those little like bat wings because I didn't know how to like blend eyeshadow I just like threw it on so I look back in old pictures and I'm like oh the whore and I'm just layering up that shadow just because I want it to really shine through when you know I add on the other colors so I'm just really packing that on so the next color that I'm going to go in with is again from Makeup Geek and it is in the color Poppy. So it's just a really pretty like reddish color. I love this color so much, it's so pretty. And I'm going to go in with a more precise brush and I'm gonna use the Sigma one right here. This is the Sigma E25 and I'm just going to dip in that color and I am going to put this in my crease. Now, 
So the reason why I'm not going in with something that's as fluffy as the first brush that I went with and went in with is because I want it to be placed more precisely in my crease. So I'm just, you know, throwing that in there like so. And I don't care if I get like a, some of that shadow like on my lid area because I'm going to end up covering it up with another shadow anyway. And I'm just taking that all the way in. And another tip is that when you're blending, the closer you hold up on the, the brush, like up by the bristles, that's going to apply more pressure on your eye. So like you're gonna apply more pressure with your eyeshadow. And then the farther back that you hold your brush, that's going to provide really gentle pressure. I'm like trying to figure out like a good way to position my hand so my hand's not like, like right in the center of the screen. And it looks so massive on camera. <laughs> All right, and then taking the same brush, I'm going to go in with an eyeshadow from MAC, and it is this one right here, and it is Red Brick. I just wanna deepen, deepen up the color a little bit. So like I said, same exact brush, and I'm just going to layer that on top of the shadow that I just put down. I'm like so excited for it to be like spring and summer already, and it's only January long it's still like a long time to go but it's because i've been like looking back like creeping on my own instagram and just looking back at like when i had like my self tanner on because i personally don't self tan during the winter time just because i just i choose not to i don't really have a reason to i'm not showing off like any like my arms or like my legs or anything but i just miss having like self tanner on and being tan and then just like wearing like you know, brighter colored, you know, makeup, like just like summery type of makeup, which I mean, who says you can't do it during the winter time, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel right during, doing it during the winter. Now, honestly, you guys need to like tell me like what kind of videos you want to see. Either like leave a comment down below or like message me or something because I mean, I have like a list, like a pre-made list of like videos that I have for like the future that I would be interested in doing. But I mean, I also want to do like videos that like what you guys want to see because I don't want to just be doing something that like what I personally think is would be entertaining to watch. So if you like have something in mind, just like let me know. And then, you know, I can like look into like doing it or, you know, it'll like give me some more ideas as well. So on camera, this is looking a lot more orange, I feel like, than what it looks like in person. In person, it looks more of like a reddy orange type of, you know, color. Um, so I'm gonna go in with this Morphe 3502 palette and I can't really hold it up and show you just because the black in here like shattered and like, I have no idea how that happened. I know, I saw online like other people had issues with this black color just like shattering. Like one day I just opened the palette and then it was just like shattered, I'm like, um, excuse me, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, I can't really hold it up and show you, but I am going to go in with, uh, it's like, I should just like dump this black out because I have black eyeshadows and this I, black eyeshadow is just like not usable. I'm gonna dump it out. Hang on, be right back. Okay. So I just decided to dump that black out into the garbage because like, like I wouldn't even be able to travel with this because it'd be like getting everywhere all over the other shadows. So I have other blacks to use. So here it is. It's so pretty. It's like very like warm tones. Um, so the color that I'm going to go in with is this like really pretty like fiery red one right here. And I'm going to put that in my crease um, and just layer it on top of the other shadows that I've been placing down. So going in with the exact same type of brush that I went in with the other shadows, I'm just going to dip into that really pretty red, like ruby red color that I just showed you. And then I'm just going to layer that on top. And on camera, at least from, you know, what I see from like, my little screen. I don't know how it'll look once I like upload it onto the computer, but it just looks so orange on camera. And in person, it looks more like now that I'm adding in this like color, it turns more into like a 
like a pinkier red. So it's not like straight up orange on how it looks on camera. I don't, I don't know why it's looking like that. Okay, and then to help blend out the edges a little bit more and to add just a little bit of a pop of color, I'm going to dip back into Chickadee. So that orange color that I went, with, went in with first, I'm just putting the tiniest amount on my brush and I'm just going to blend it along the edges of that eyeshadow just to help blend it out a little bit and smooth it out. That's like another tip too, like if your eyeshadow gives it, isn't blending, how you would like it to go in with like either like a really light like brown or like something that's kind of like in the tone of like what you're working with and take that color and just lightly blend it along the edges of your shadow because that'll help with blending it out and getting those lines really nice and smooth. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my MAC um, 242 brush and I'm going to dip into this color right here and I'm going to dip my brush into that and put that all, all over my lid so I'm just patting that on the lid there's a swiping and I'm bringing in that shadow like all the way not like all the way down here but like bringing it down pretty far so I'm going to take a little bit of MAC Fix Plus and I'm going to spritz my brush with that. And I'm running out of mine. Eh, I'm running out of mine, I need to get some more. But I'm going to dip back into that shadow and the reason I'm going in with MAC Fix Plus to spray my brush is just to add a little bit more metallic to it because if you spray your brush with either like um like a setting spray or something and you're going in with more metallic shadows, that'll just really make those stand out and pop more. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a clean brush and just blend in that crease area just a little bit just to blend out that shadow because going in with like Fix Plus or like a setting spray or something and then going in with an eyeshadow, that'll create kind of almost like a harsh line area like in your crease area like where you stop that shadow on your lid. So just go in and lightly blend that line a little bit so that it's not, you know, like a harsh like line between your lid color and then your crease colors. All right, so next I'm gonna do my lower lash line underneath here. I recommend that anybody do their lower lash line. I think it really adds to the look and helps complete it. So I'm gonna go in with this brush here and it is my Sigma E45 and I'm going to dip into that shade Chickadee, that orange one that we went in with first. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to blend that underneath of my eye, almost like a transition shade, like how we went in with this color as our transition shade up on the top. Same concept on the bottom. I like to add like a transition shade underneath of there so then it helps blend out darker colors. And I'm going from outer all the way to where my tear duct stops. I'm not dragging it all the way in. I'll do that sometimes if I want it to be really smoky, but I don't want it to be like too much with this look. And don't be afraid to really blend out under that lower lash line and drag it down. I think it just creates such a pretty like look to the eye and helps really like smoke it out underneath of there. And plus, I feel like it really helps open the eyes too, to where like if you just have like shadow like only on the top and nothing on the, on the bottom, I feel like it kind of like closes the eyes versus like if you drag, you know, like drag your shadow down a little bit at the bottom and help like and really like smoke that out. I feel like it just really like helped like widen the eyes more because it's like a balance between like what you have on your top lid and then what you have underneath. All right, and then to add some contrast underneath of the eye, I am going to go in with this color from Makeup Geek and it is called Dirty Martini. So it's just like a really pretty like olive, like army green shade. So going in with, let's see, what do I wanna use? I'm gonna start off with my flat definer brush from Sigma. This one is the Sigma E15, and I'm going to dip into that color, and I'm going to run that along the lower lash line all the way to the end of where that tear duct uh, like stops right here, or I guess technically the beginning of your tear duct. And I'm just placing this there. I know it's gonna look very harsh, but I'm gonna go in and blend that out. 
All right, so then taking my pencil brush, this is the Morphe E18. I'm going to go in and I'm going to blend that color out. I'm just gonna like kind of like blend it out like back and forth, but then kind of like drag it down a little bit too. All right, dipping back into that dirty martini, martini color with my pencil brush, and I'm just going to add some more to blend that out. I love smoking out my lower lash line. Like I cannot do my makeup without smoking out my lower lash line. All right, so then I have that color blending out underneath of the eye. Now I'm going to go in with an even darker shade of green from Makeup Geek. And this one is called Enchanted Forest. Sorry, there's a little bit of a shadow on there. And my fingers are so dirty from like that black. So sorry about that. But this is a super pretty color. And I'm gonna go in with, um, my flat definer brush again, dip into that, and then I'm going to run that along, like super close to my uh, like my lash line right there. And I'm just doing this to add a little bit of extra dimension to the eye. And then I'm also gonna blend that out a little bit as well with my pencil brush. But I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit. I'm not gonna drag this one down as far just cause I want like a little bit of that separation and that gradient look in between like Enchanted Forest and Dirty Martini. And then I'll go in a little bit more with Chickadee here in a second and kind of like blend that out underneath. So then there's like that gradient type of effect. All right, and then going back in with my Sigma brush that I went in with Chickadee, I'm, going to, I'm just gonna dip back into Chickadee, tap off some of the excess and then just lightly just go underneath of all of that shadow that we just did because this will one, help blend that color a little bit, and then two, add a little bit of that orange back in underneath of there so then you have like that nice like gradient type of effect underneath of the eye. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to start to highlight the brow bone and the inner corner. So I am going to go in, where's my shadow? With one of my favorite highlight shades to use for my brow bone and it is from MAC and it is, what, I forget the name, Nylon, oh my God. So going in with Nylon, but I'm gonna take my MAC 242, dip that into that color and then I'm going to hit the high point of the brow right here. Now I love highlighting my brow bone. I highlight my brow bone every single day anytime I do my makeup and it's just gonna really help give like a little bit of like a lifted appearance to the brow. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my fluffy brush and then just kind of like gently blend like in between the brow bone highlight and then the shadow just to make that like a smoother transition in between there. So now I'm gonna take my little itty bitty Morphe brush here. This, this is the Morphe E36 and I'm going to dip into that MAC shadow that I've been highlighting with and go in my inner corner right here to add a little bit of a pop. So I actually think I'm gonna go back in with that Enchanted Forest color, the darkest one that we went in with, and I'm gonna actually bring that in just slightly past this tear duct right here. I actually want it to go in a little farther. I don't wanna blend that out too much in there because I don't wanna drag the inner corner down way too much because then I feel like it would look a little bit sloppy. Just lightly blending it out so then it's not like super harsh. All right, so now I'm going to go in and bronze the face. I'm gonna go, come back to my eyes again at the end to finish those off. But I just, I can't stand looking at my pale face right now. It just needs a little bit of love with some color. But I'm going to go in with the Benefit Hula bronzer right here and I'm going to bronze my face. Right, I'm gonna bring that bronzer just kind of on like the very tip of my chin and then bring it down my neck a little bit. All right, so now that I got my bronzer on, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that translucent powder and I am going to stamp out underneath of here a little bit just to kind of sharpen that up and clean up that bronzer slightly. And I'm going to leave that sit while I do other 
things to the face. All right, so then while this sits, I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of blush. So I'm going to mix a couple of colors. So I'm going to use uh, this blush from MAC. It's, uh, it's MAC's Warm Soul blush, super pretty. And then I'm just going to take a color, sorry, don't judge me, it's a little bit dusty, but I'm just going to take a color from this Morphe palette right here. It's um, their 9B blush palette. And I think I'm gonna go in with, um, I'll mix it with this coral shade right here just because we have like more of like those like ready coral tones on the eyes. And then this MAC blush is like pretty neutral. But I'm gonna mix those two together. And I would go in with my Milani Cosmetics Luminoso blush. That's like one of my favorite blushes. It's uh, one, very affordable because it's a drugstore blush. And two, it just has like the prettiest like orange tone to it. I love that blush, but I sadly ran out of mine. Wah. I need to get a new one. But this Morphe blush palette is really nice. I've had it for like a few years now and um, the colors are really pigmented so you don't need to go in with like a whole lot. I'm just going to put that on my cheeks. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to add some color to the center of my face just because I feel like it needs a little bit of color there. It's just looking a little blank. So I'm going to take my personal favorite bronzer to go in with the center of my face with and it is this huge bronzer right here from Marc Jacobs and it is his Tantastic Omega Bronzer. So this one's just a really nice neutral colored bronzer and just taking my Sigma, what was this again, E45 and just going down lightly the sides of my nose not for contouring, but just to add in some extra color. And then going underneath of my lip. All right, so now I'm gonna take a separate brush and just wipe away that powder. Since it's been sitting there long enough, all right, so I'm gonna go back to the eyes now that my face is feeling a little bit better due to having some more color added to it. But I'm going to go in and add some liner now and I'm going to mix two of them. So I'm going to first go in with this Makeup Forever Artist Pencil and this is in the shade 208 Unlimited Blue and I'm just gonna put that in my waterline. All right, and then I'm going to mix that with another liner, and this is from Marc Jacobs. I love his liners, and this was, and this one is in the shade Whirlpool, so it's not as blue, but it's like a bluish green color. And so I'm just gonna add that right on top. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add some mascara. First, I'm gonna curl my lashes. You don't have to do this, but I love to curl my lashes do a couple squeezes. Now I'm not gonna go in and add false lashes just because I like never wear them anymore. So don't feel like you have to wear them, but if you like false lashes, go ahead and add those. It'll just like add to the look a little bit. Okay, so now that I have my mascara on, I'm gonna go ahead and add a highlight. So I'm going to be adding my very used and abused Champagne Pop. I have another one that's like like a, like a brand new. Uh, I'm just, you know, using this bad boy up and I'm just going to add that to my cheekbones. And now I'm using this one because I feel like the champagne color is gonna really complement the color of the eye that we have going on. Put some on the tip of my nose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my eyebrows with my tinted brow gel. So this is the Benefit Gimme Brow and I am in the shade 3.5. And then I'm going to completely set my brows with my Anastasia Clear Brow Gel to ensure my brows do not move and they stay in place. All right, so then the final step is that I'm going to go in and apply my lips. So I am going to go in with MAC Myth Lipstick. So it's just a matte, very nude lip. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a gloss and I'm going to add this Bare Minerals lip gloss in the shade Groovy. So it's just a really pretty nude color. And I prefer having a glossier lip personally. 
All right, so that completes this look. So I hope you enjoyed. I feel like it's very fun. It would definitely look very fun for summer and like spring and summertime when it's like hotter outside and you're wearing like brighter colors and all the corals and the yellows and all that are in style. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, then feel free to let me know and I'll get back to you. Also, don't forget to please comment, like, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Oh, and share this video too. I would really appreciate that. So yeah, I will see you in my next one.